Welcome back. One quick thing before we continue. I'm gonna look at these tracks in the order in which they appear on the soundtrack, instead of how they appear in the game. This is mostly just due to convenience on both our ends, but I still thought I'd mention it. After the guys and Gal from Avalanche blow up the reactor, they split up. Cloud walks through the deserted streets of Midgar, and the song Anxious Heart plays in the background. Although Cloud is the only main character who doesn't really have a theme directly associated with him, I would say that there are two instances which come close. The first is the main theme of the game, which we will talk about in a later episode. Anxious Heart is the other one. Apart from this area of the game, it's also closely linked to Cloud's and Tifa's hometown of Nibelheim. The song has a very anxious feel to it, with its falling minor chords in the sustained strings. To me, this reflects Cloud's feeling of isolation and detachment from the world. One other thing to mention is that the prelude theme can be heard in the accompaniment. Didn't quite catch that? Let's speed up the first part. It's hard to say why Uematsu uses this melody in this specific song, but my interpretation is that the prelude theme, which only appears in the beginning of the game and the continue screen after the party died in battle, represents the story aspect of the game by framing it with these two tracks and Final Fantasy VII is very much Cloud's story. One last thing to mention about this piece would be that it uses many more instruments traditionally associated with an orchestra. There are many other tracks on the soundtrack of which this can be said, but this happens to be the first. On this note, a point about instruments and MIDI sounds. Since Uematsu's score doesn't feature real instruments and relies on the onboard synth chip of the PlayStation, I actually have a source for this, it can be difficult to discern the different instruments which are being used. I do, however, think that it's usually easy to tell which sound is imitating which particular instrument, especially if we take into account all the live versions of these tracks. So, to sum up, I'm just gonna call these MIDI sounds instruments, for simplicity's sake. We first hear Tifa's theme in the bar's seventh heaven, which she owns. I would call this the first nice song in the game. After much dark industrial or electronic music, we get this simple and innocent little piece. To me it kinda sounds like a lullaby, which would reflect Tifa's and Cloud's shared childhood memories. It also provides some respite from the constant rush of battles, explosions and chase sequences in the first parts of FF7. The piece has a long intro before the actual melody begins. And this acts as a kind of musical soothing balm to get the player into a different mindset. The melody itself is also very mellow and clear. This tune is the Tifa motif. We can hear it several times over the course of the game, basically every time Tifa appears in a cutscene. So for instance, in the ending cinematic, where Cloud saves her from falling into the crumbling northern cave.
All in all, I really like this song, and I think it's one of the tracks which I actually improved upon in the piano collection. Next is Barrett's theme. It starts with timpanis and brass, and to me it has a very militaristic feel to it. The bombastic beginning reflects Barrett's brazen personality. This track has always been a bit puzzling to me, as it doesn't really ever appear in this form again. But as I did some listening, I found many parts of it in two other songs. When the party arrives in Barrett's ruined hometown of Corel, the track is almost completely replicated in the song Mark of the Trader. Only this time the arrangement is very restrained and the melodies are not fully developed. There are three main melodies in Barrett's theme and we can find them all in Mark of the Trader. The pizzicato motif, meaning the plucked string motif. The string and woodwind melody. And the brass melody. In these changes, Barrett's regret about being responsible for the town's destruction is reflected in the harmonic and melodic differences and the subdued arrangement. Two of these melodies also appear in the flashback scene, where we see Shinra destroying Corel. Here we can hear an even more reserved version of this song. The pizzicato motif appears only sparingly, over a monotonous accompaniment in a minor key. The brass melody can also be heard, but now it's far less rigid and there are some variations which make it hard to discern at first. This is another instance of Uematsu using familiar motifs to get across certain feelings and associations. This is something he does very well, especially in all the PlayStation 1 games. Which might, in the end, be a major factor in why these soundtracks are so great. And that was it for part 2. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part 3.